The Fake History of Melbourne Part 1 Once upon a time, around 1838, there was nothing here, except trees and meadows. Then there was a gold rush in 1851, and within only a decade, Melbourne magically morphed into the large city you see in this photo. If you've watched my videos on Chicago, San Francisco, Montana and others, you recognize the now familiar narrative. Nothing. Then gold rush. Then city. It remains unexplained, undocumented, and unverified how this sprawling mega city was built, who built it, how many masons were employed, where the stones were quarried from, what building techniques were used, how many were needed to build it, etc. Historians demand, without flinching, that all these buildings were built in the mid to late 1800s by a low population band of settlers to Melbourne, Australia. All of the houses in the photos I show were demolished not too long after they were supposedly built. Academics insist that several buildings supposedly erected in the 1850s were taken down in the 1880s. The buildings in these photos were also demolished within decades after they were built. Why? These photographs are ascribed to the 1850s. What's wrong, did you have a different idea of Australia in 1850? You're not the only one. Australian school teachers, museums, education programs, television show producers, the Ministry of Education, and many more firmly state that all this was accomplished without high-tech cranes, excavators, bulldozers, graders, pavers, compactors, dump trucks, trenchers, drum rollers, loaders, pavers, boring machines, etc. Dust with horse carriages, hammer, and chisel. The post office, upper right, was already there in the early 1850s, when Melbourne was only a village, supposedly. A whole city, built between 1850 and 1870, but no documentation on it. How strange. Before that, the Aboriginal people lived in the area for 30,000 to 50,000 years, but in all that time, they did not build or accomplish anything. In fact, they still walk around naked, as hunter-gatherers, just like 50,000 years ago. At least, that's what the foremost experts in the fields of history archaeology and anthropology insist. Do you believe that? Do you believe that these human beings didn't develop or build anything for 50,000 years? I certainly don't. The Parliament Building on the right, and the Library of the 1850s on the left. In 1851, a census counted 23,000 inhabitants in Melbourne. If Melbourne was nothing more than a town in the vast wilderness of Australia, I wonder. Who all built this? The city must have been a permanent construction site from 1835 onwards. Where are the designs and construction photos? The upper right photo is from 1850. What is a Roman-looking building doing in newly settled Australia? This is supposed to be a bird's eye view of Melbourne, drawn in 1855. The artist was viewing it from a hill behind Yarra River. If we consider that only 15 years earlier there was nothing, the accomplishment is almost miraculous. The drawing is accurate, inasmuch as it aligns with the official map of Melbourne from 1855. It's impressive for all its sophisticated building. Even so, I suspect it was even more than shown here. A close-up. Melbourne was founded in 1835. That means, everything you see here, would have been set up in only 20 years. Not impossible, of course, but very impressive. This is the official timeline. How did all of this develop so quickly? Ah yes, it was through the gold rush in 1851, they say. They use the same excuse for cities arising out of nothing in America. That's how they could afford to build it all. If the gold rush started in 1851, it gave them only four years to achieve what we see on this image. Notice how the timeline makes no mention of the gigantic construction projects we find completed by 1855. The reason can only be because there's no reference data on when, by who, and why all of it was built. Some close-ups. This one is St. Peter's Church. It still stands today. The Jewish Synagogue. The Exhibition Building. St. Paul's Church at Prince's Bridge. <laughs> 
Here's a drawing seven years later that shows St. Paul's Church with the pointy roof removed. The large black structure is apparently the post office. Number 28 is St. Francis Catholic Church. 27 is the hospital. And 29 the Supreme Court. Not bad for a village of 23,000. This is the famous Flinders Street Station in 1900. I'm showing it because I believe this is the real house building skill of the settlers. They're telling you that the people who built this tin shack of a train station also built this. Historians say, during the gold rush, Australian people lived in what is called canvas towns. They built up tents around Melbourne because there was nowhere to sleep, no food and no drinking water. Imagine that. No water, no food, nowhere to sleep. Now contrast that information with the excessively luxurious buildings I just showed you. It doesn't add up, does it? I've previously suggested that the gold rush in North America was not about suddenly discovering gold somewhere and then mining it. It was about excavating and looting from the ancient buried civilization. I believe the same thing happened in Melbourne. The Australians did not make Melbourne. They did not build it. They did not own it. That's why there were extremely impressive buildings but no food, no water and nowhere to sleep. Here's a Melbourne map of 1858 that shows the city much bigger and more developed than on the 1855 drawing. All this change in just three years? I don't think so. It was already that way when the settlers arrived. His story tells us that in 1835, the government issued a ban on settling in Melbourne. Anyone attempting to settle would be considered a trespasser, they said. But if nothing was there, what were they trespassing on? It is said that the people defied government orders and settled there anyway. So eventually the government gave up fighting immigration and began districting the area. The story makes little sense to me. If the government told me I am banned from visiting a certain place, I'd try to go settle elsewhere. Who wants to invite trouble? So, why did people settle there anyway? This was 15 years before the gold rush. Did they know there was something of value to find there? On many old photos, the roads are dirt and mud. What a contrast to the buildings. This is the Oriental Bank of Melbourne in 1857. Just like elsewhere, it's easy to suspect Melbourne wasn't built, it was excavated, under the guise of gold rush. Let me ask you. Do you recall any gold rush around which entire cities were built in more modern times? Me neither. Old Melbourne was full of telegraphy poles. I have my doubts about what these really are as well, as you can imagine. They say this is Melbourne in 1939. Even though photography began in the 1820s, no photos are offered to prove this is what Melbourne looked like. The oldest known photo was taken in 1858, at a time when it was safe to show Melbourne fully developed. I've noticed the same pattern in other places around the world. We have thousands of photos from the 1820s, 30s and 40s, but none showing us what the small versions of these big cities looked like. How unlikely. This video is just an introduction to something I find really fascinating. If you find it interesting, I'll continue in part 2.